What's up, Destiny Church? We are here again to talk about the life of Christ. Uh, we're a few weeks into this now. I hope you guys are all enjoying it. I know I am. Please come to the Wednesday meetings. It's been a really good time talking about these things. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into it. We're going to be talking about the uh, part where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I struggle saying that word, so if I mispronounce it, I apologize. The Garden of Gethsemane, right? It is uh, a story famous in the Bible. Um, and it's really a pivotal time that I think that in some way, shape, or form we could all relate to. Uh, with that being said, let's go to Luke chapter 22, verse 41. And I'm going to read um, to you a little bit from there. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and began to pray, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Uh, I'm not done, but I want to stop there for a second. Wow, that's pretty relatable, right? Um, here, Jesus knows what's coming. He knows what he's got to do. And he's seemingly afraid, understandably afraid. And he's, he's going through here and he's saying, God, you know, I know, I know what has to be done. Uh, but I don't, I don't know that I want to. And if you would, if you could, if it is your will, God, take this away from me. And we go on and he says, Then an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. Man, Jesus needs strength, and that's incredible to think about. You, th you think about the verse before where he's, he's telling God, If it's not your will, please take this away. And then God gives him strength, sends an angel down, and gives him strength. Being in anguish, he prayed more fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples. He found them sleeping, exhausted from their grief. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you don't enter into temptation. You know, there's really two things that you can draw from that, or a lot of things, really, but two things that we're going to talk about that you can draw from that. One, it's the undeniable gift that God gives us, His grace and salvation. And he did something that we couldn't do, right? We need, the, re the whole reason we need God is because if you think about it, people, us as people, we're all wicked individuals. We all have our struggles that we deal with that make us fall short of the glory of God. And Jesus here is afraid, but he knows what's got to be done. He steps up to the plate and takes on the brunt of our punishment so that we could enter into eternal life. And then second is, man, we got to be on guard. We got to be vigilant. And what does that mean to be vigilant? Well, here, the disciples that were with Jesus, these are guys who, who literally did life with Jesus, were right next to him, falling asleep on the job. You know, I think we could all relate to that a little bit. You know, um, my son. Corbin, my middle son, if you've ever had the chance to meet him, he's a quirky kid. He's funny. Um, he's just, he's got his own personality. But Corbin has always had a thing for glazed donuts. He, he's just, he doesn't like the crazy stuff, you know, uh, the Hertz donuts with all the candy on it. He's not, that's not what he's about. He likes a glazed donut. And we used to have to drive about 50 minutes one way to church, and we would always stop at a gas station and not make the most healthy choice and get our kids a donut. And there's this time when Corbin was about four or five years old and uh, we go up to get some donuts and uh, <coughs> lo and behold, the lady in front of us takes literally all the donuts, every single donut in the case. And you know, I'm a little let down thinking, what am I going to do? My son, who is kind of temperamental anyways, has just taken, had all of his donuts taken away. But I look down and he's got tears running down his face, but he's not really made a scene or nothing like that. And I say, son, what's wrong? And he goes, at the top of his lungs, the big lady took all the donuts. And, and while I was mortified, uh, Everyone in the gas station heard, you know, 
uh, it was terribly embarrassing. The lady was gracious to us, and, and she laughed, and, and she moved to the side, and thankfully they slid in another, another <laughs> uh, pan of donuts, if you will, another pan of donuts, and she said, there's more right up here, buddy. Had he just gotten mad and stormed off or not paid any attention or was just lackadaisical and didn't have a clue what was going on, like the rest of us sometimes could be, he wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have known, that there was something up there for us. There was something up there for him to get. And this is kind of like these guys here. If we're all lackadaisical in our faith, we, we may not realize that what we need, God's salvation, God's grace, is right in front of us. We may, just like me and him, we may be in the same building as the donuts and not know they're there, right? I know that's a terrible comparison, but it really is, stick with me here, it really is functional in this situation. We could be in the same building, the church building, as God's grace and forgiveness and not really get a hold of it, not really take our own piece of it. So that's what I got for you guys today. We'll see you later.